guys welcome back to my channel this is my 2018 wrap up and it will include my top five books of 2018 we'll start with some stats I read 35 books with an average star rating of 4.1 because if I think I'm gonna give a book a two star or a one star I will DNF that book if I can't if I don't think I'm I don't I'll be honest I don't have much time to read anymore so I'm not going to waste my time on one and two star reads. That being said, there was one book that was a two star. And because I loved the movie so much, I muddled my way through. And it was unfortunately my most disappointing read of 2018. And it'll be a book I unhaul because I'm just not going to pick it up again. And to all of you who are fans, I apologise. I love the movie, but... The book was not for me. And that is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. My most disappointing read of the year. I, I thought I'd be able to read through it, muddle my way through it and just didn't enjoy it anywhere near as much. So that's my most disappointing read of the year and my only two star. I was gifted or bought in total 12 books. In total I spent $32 and that was on one single book. Um, so that tells you that I received more than that. Well actually, um, there are a few I received as Christmas presents. So I, that's brought my total up a little bit. I think I've got everything that I got over Christmas and that makes that 12. So if you hear dog noises in the background, that's because Jersey's in with me. Now, pages read by month. So I'm going to put all these stats up on my Facebook page because I'm still learning YouTube and whenever I put anything up it appears right in the middle of the screen which I don't think you guys need in it. They're tiny. So I'm just going to put everything up on my Facebook page. I'll add the link to that if you want to see all my stats. Um, you can see all the graphs and I'll make it look really pretty. So in total I read 13,481 pages. I read four hardback, 11 paperback, three ebooks, and my biggest category is audiobooks because I listen to them to and from work and also at work if I'm in an open plan office. So if I need to concentrate on something on my computer, put my headphones on and I either listen to music or an audiobook depending on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, my biggest age range is YA with 20. Uh, I read 11 adult books and uh, two children's books. And as for years published, I've read one from the 70s, two from the 90s, uh, eight from 2000 to 2010, um, eight from 2011 to 15 published 2016 2017 and one new release from 2018. I wonder which one that one is. Oh, that'll be um, probably my longest book. I'll get to them at the end. Um, so, my star ratings. Like I said, I had one two star, seven three star, 13 four star, and I'm happy that m my biggest category is my five stars and I read 14 of them. Okay, one of the. <laughs> One of the main reasons is, is um, I kind of labelled a whole series five star because it was, it just drew me in. I couldn't wait to pick up the next books. Page length, quite a few big books. So it seems to be about 50-50 above the 400 books as below it. Authors. Have about... Almost, uh, um, so I've read, unfortunately, all white authors. I haven't picked up any people of colour, which really I want to change it next year. I've read 20 from the United States, uh, 14 from Australia, and I think there must have been one from the UK. I am so happy about this. Over half of my books are from female authors. Um, and 
a decent chunk of those were Australian authors as well, which I'm really glad at. I thought when doing my books I'd end up reading, you know, mostly um, US authors because that seems to be what's popular, but turns out a few of my favourites are Australian authors. So Trudy Canavan, who is one of my go-to rereads, whom I haven't actually done a reread of until this year for at least five years, is an Australian author. I didn't know that. Um, Garth Nix is, is an Australian author who I quite like. Uh, John Flanagan. So that boosted my Australian authors' um, reads this year, which I'm so glad it was almost 50% Australian authors as per others. My longest and shortest books. My shortest book was for a readathon and the task was green on the cover so I chose The Forest of Silence for that one and this has, I can't remember how many, 120 pages. So a very short book, finished in an evening. My longest book and it took a while to get through. A lot of shadows with how many pages? 699 pages. I've done my most disappointing read so now I'm going to go through my top five and I'm going to screech over a little bit because I'm going to have to put up two graphics because one was an audiobook that I don't yet own the physical copy of which I do want to because I really love the world. And I'm definitely going to reread that series. And the other is a um, another um, book that I read that I don't own the physical copy of. Yeah, I actually it was a library borrow. So I'm going to start with the Black Magician trilogy. Um, this is the first book, The Magician's Guild, by Trudy Canavan. This is my go-to reread. If I am in between books and I'm not sure what I want to read next and I don't have anything pressing on my TBR, like I haven't, I finished my TBR and I want to just go back and reread something easy or I'm in between audiobooks, I will go back to this series. Now, even the dog likes it because the dog tried to read it. My next go-to reread will be um, The Ship of the Dead in the Magnus Chase series. I've got the first two physical books on my red shelf. I absolutely love the world and I love the characters. Um, there is an LGBT character who I absolutely loved how they were shaped. Um, it felt very authentic to me. I've had a lot of experience in the community through uni. Um, I didn't realise my own orientation until I was at university. And so how that person was portrayed definitely matched some people I knew. Uh, my next series, because yes, unfortunately a lot of these are series that have ended up in my top five, is the Old Kingdom series, which I will be going back to and rereading and to the point where I ask people to give me the physical books for Christmas so I could actually read them, not just um, borrow them from the library and listen to them. Um, so the first one is Sabriel. If you like necromancy and you like the kind of the quest style fantasy, I would recommend these, this series. I didn't realise that I liked necromantic stories until I started um, reading uh, Sabriel. And I just got so drawn into the world. Through this, I also found out that animal companions are my thing. Sabriel has a cat who is maybe not really a cat, I'm not gonna, but it's a cat that can talk. His name is Mocket, and he appears throughout the series. And so yes, that's where I found I like Animal Companions a lot because in another series I like, the His Dark Material series, there are Animal Companions in that and my favourite David Eddings book, there is an Animal Companion in that one as well. So that's 
another one of my top five is A Court of Mist and Fury. Wasn't I read through Akatar and enjoyed it, but oh my god, I loved this book. I cannot wait to buddy read A Court of Wings and Ruin starting soon. I'm so looking forward to that. So yeah, worlds that I can't wait to jump back into are the reasons why you will find most of these on my top five for the year. So Akamath, every heart a doorway. Sorry, I missed one. Another one that I can't wait to jump into the world of, and that was the light. That was a library read, and I cannot wait to read Down Among the Sticks and Bones, which my partner has on her TBR in her wrapped books. So I may end up unwrapping some of her books to find it to read it. Um, that's by Shona Maguire. And then again, I'm going to reread Magnus Chase at some point. I know I am. I just love the world building that Rick Ryden has done in that series in particular. So that's my top five. Now I have discovered a trope that really hurts me on a personal level, and that is kill your gaze. Um, I was reading a series and I was thoroughly enjoying it. And then in the last book in the series, you get introduced to a lesbian couple. And unfortunately, one of the lesbian characters doesn't make it to the end of that book. Spoilers, sorry. And that just killed the entire series for me. If I had have known when I picked up the first book that that was going to happen in the third, I, I may have muddled through it, but it just hurt that the only LGBT representation in that series ended up ending in the kill your gaze trope, just ruined the entire series for me. And so I found that's a trope that will ruin books for me. So that's my wrap up for the year. Got a bit personal with some of the reasons why I'm loving some series and why I um, didn't end up liking some others. Um, also there is a queer representation in the second that's discovered in the second book of this series which is also done really well given the time period of when this is set. So that is my 2018. I will link again my Facebook page in the description below so that I can put up all those pretty charts there. I will make sure that those images appear where they're supposed to so you'll get like little pictures but other than that, that's my 2018. Ah, my partner's just coming to check on me. And so that's it for me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.